keyboard is working <laughs> so that's really cool so let's try it okay it's been far too long and uh, it's been sitting up here since christmas so it's so it's the 19th of january already it's like it's been sitting here for now almost three weeks I'm going to pull out the keycaps of this one and put it onto here so i have this t-shirt on for two reasons one is that i don't want all the dust in here because yeah there's a lot of dust in this room and the other one is when i film it it's really hard to film a black subject so let's get on with it I guess I'll just be putting these springs away somewhere because this is a working keyboard and I hate to take it apart but uh, what can you do if you don't have keep caps so when I come to think of it I will just get another keyboard I probably so that was a lot of keycaps so I got the C64 out of the way and also off camera I took out this space bar. There's a lot of parts that, regarding that space bar actually. Um, and some bent pins um, or wiring. And there's some fittings too. So it goes into here. So we'll have a look at that. I need to study a bit about that. Anyway, here's the board. Actually I started soldering them. And trying to put this frame over it so that was wrong so what you need to do is uh, put together the frame here with uh, you can see the spacer and the pin and the nut and you don't tighten it first you just keep it loose so you can move this uh, board around inside here to align them with the holes so and then you put put the keys from top so what we're going to do now is to mount keys and for that we need adapters <coughs> and those adapters are 3d print you can see here is the 3d print they look very similar some of them have uh, pins studs and these are like plus yep it's kind of working but it's not very far into the key as you can see try push it down on the table yep that worked fine so All right, so it's a press fit. Well, that was better than I thought, actually. I lost the tutorial, yeah.
but it's the next day and I had to quit because my back was burning so from all this working from home I am um, going to look through this uh, document uh, because what's uh, remaining now is just the special keys all right so you can see some of these have uh, uh, I think those are shift or let's see these are yeah they have double holes uh, that was the function keys and also the shift key and control key I think yeah it says shift function key restore and control have a 3d printed stem into the free hole also stabilize the keys during key press okay so the shift key has some special inserts and uh, I was a bit scared yesterday because it said uh, this co-star thing the keyboard stabilizer system uses coaster keycap inserts and coaster plate inserts. I think you can see them here. Uh, the coaster inserts are in need for return key and spacebar. These can be found in various web shops. And I was freaking out just, oh no, do I need to go to a web shop now? <laughs> but no, you can see here, it came with this uh, project. You can see he also bought himself a... Uh, a Dubro EC render number 482 and a one millimeter piano wire to make them so that's cool so you can actually bend wires himself so let's try these uh, cool store things let's see if we can uh, insert them we have two of those and they are going like this let's try insert one of these well, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? So, there you go. <laughs> Let's try the other one. It's over here. Let's get it the correct way anyway. Oh, shoot. Oh, there it goes. Like this. There you go. <laughs> All right. So now for the restore key, it's easy to see that uh, the uh, star and stud, the star goes here and the studs goes here. You can see that because it's going next to the arrow. We can see here from this one, we will need a stud and we will need a uh, one of these guys. We want the cross here. You see that I'm holding it the correct way. So it goes down there, right? With a cross. And then this stud will help it from uh, going too far into the keyboard. So I can't hold it. So let's try this. This is probably going to be difficult, yeah. It's already proving to be difficult, so let me just uh, try and improve it a little bit. That's working. Uh, try to be careful. Great. Now just put it in here. It was really hassle, actually. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it in there. All right, that's perfect. That was proving to be a bit more difficult than I thought. In the return, we need, at least we need one of these normal ones, and then we need some sideways stuff, which we have over here. There you go. There you go, like this. Okay, let's push it in there. Now it's all the way, look. There's some funny inserts, like this. You can see it has like a, a hole or something. 
actually that's a good picture because now we can see the short side is on the bottom side and then the uh, long side is on the top side okay so if i hold it like this uh, the long side is supposed to be actually we're doing it incorrectly now it's supposed to be like this let's try push it down oh yeah that's good They're not perfectly inside, so I'm not sure if that's because the studs are too long or something. And from the picture, this one goes in like this. And on the picture, it's also not bent, as you can see in here. There's actually a bend, extra bend down. I think it's trying to avoid the key. That's why there's an extra bend. So probably it has to be this way. So Okay, that was actually easy. Just hold it like this and then push it on. So that's how it's on. Great. Uh, wait. See if I can. I got the return key on, but as you can see, it doesn't go up again. So I got it on with a little bit of force, to be honest. And um, I don't know why it's so slow. So it's impossible for me to see what's touching and not touching in here oh there you go okay so you can see the plunger i can't make anything out of this really <laughs> there's a lubricant that comes with these projects which uh maybe can use i think maybe need some filing somewhere but uh, at the moment i don't know where the problem is so but uh, I can get it out and then uh, let's have a look at it again. Okay, so I th what I think is touching is uh, these uh, guys here. Uh, by the way, in the previous clip you could see me inserting this one and it looked crooked, so I've fixed that. <laughs> There's just a little problem I had, so... Definitely something is making friction here. I don't know if it's touching the top part or the bottom part or whatever. And um, see if I can see some uh, skid marks. This one is moving freely, so it's not that. I come to think of it, I can could smash a uh, spring in there, maybe to help it. Good try. Doesn't hurt to try. Oh yeah, that <laughs> that's actually working. I didn't think that the spring would ever fit in there, so but it's a bit hard to press. And clunky and there's a lot of friction everywhere so like this well it's now it's actually working with that spring in there but I can't think that it's going to have an extra spring in there that sounds ridiculous doesn't it there you can see the coaster thing and uh, you can see the thing goes up and down and you have the retainer spring and on the right side there, you can see it actually is touching the coaster, but not on the other side. So if I wiggle it... So... But the, at the top there, in the middle, like, exactly there... The... It's not supposed to show, it's supposed to go all the way into the adapter. So let me show you. Must be something with this uh, coaster thing here. Um, as you can see, they they are not mounted inside the adapter properly. I could maybe cut the pin that goes into the adapter. 
Anyway, but it came with some glue. So, uh, glue. <laughs> some uh, lube. It's a super lube, so. <laughs> Here. There you go. Doesn't matter if it's too much, really. Like this. Let's try now. Yeah, so it's just borderline for it to stick. So I'm not sure what to do, so watch out in the next clip. <laughs> yes, I removed the coasters and uh, retrain, retraining spring and insert the key and there's no friction whatsoever and stabilize oh yeah now I can see why they want stabilization here so yeah so if you can get this uh, to work better then maybe that's uh, the solution I was thinking of cutting down this uh, insert here down now we can see it's, it's completely flush I'm really happy about that Oh, still stuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking Norwegian. <laughs> I'm so happy now. And uh, I got a tip on uh, forum64.de. And the tip was to file down the coaster. So I did so. As you can see, it's using a file here. And it works perfectly now with the coasters. So I'm really happy with that. As you can see, I can it in all direction it's perfect as is and no extra fuse <laughs> and no extra spring this time just the spring that is there from before so I will let that be I have to clean this though because uh, it has accumulated a lot of dust from this uh, this is 800 paper so but yeah, really, 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 really happy about this. <laughs> so now I will do the same for this one because uh, if I fit this on here, I need a spring here also. <clears throat> it's not ideal, so I'll do the same thing. File the top such that it uh, gets smooth. So let me just try this. Just hold it as straight as possible. Okay, let's try listening to this keyboard. I'm just gonna put the microphone up here, pointing down. So let's see. It's perfect. The sounding of the space bars was perfect. Okay, the microphone is peaking. Let's try. I don't know why it goes up all the time. Hold on, I'm just gonna turn it down a bit. Okay, so 
The funny thing is that uh, if you if you touch the keys like this, but if you touch them a bit harder, sounds like a typewriter. I thought it's heat shrink tubing or something, but it was not heat shrinkable, so <laughs> I guess they are just for funneling, maybe. Or maybe not using this one, just these. It's 
So, but I think this is great. Let's try connect it to the computer and see. Okay, let's try connect this to the computer. See if it works. So I push in here and then I can lift up. So let's just get this out of the way. Now let's see what we can do. Yeah, so we'll use this one. And the key is here, the one with the missing one. This, okay, it's on. This was really hard. <laughs> That's the first time I'm putting on a DuPont connector with a <laughs> clippers. So, oh, there you go. Okay, now it's on. So yeah, I guess we just have to test it. Okay, so I was turning this on and it didn't work. So, but I, when I turn it on the second time, it was no cursor. So I had a picture, but no cursor. And that uh, explains that it might be the CIA. And yes, I'm working on the CIA replacement chip. So therefore, while, while I was working on that, I had really thick pins down here. So this socket is now not really tight anymore so let's try just to push it down turn it on and no cursor so press this down maybe okay now we have it so there's a bad socket there but the computer is working the keyboard is working <laughs> so that's really cool so let's try to write something. Let's keep it as screaming. See if I can put this camera up here. And uh, see what we can do. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, ten print. That works. Det var gott maskin virka då. I'm saying to Ingrid, it was good that the machine was working. So I was a bit worried for. Maybe I had caused some ESD or something. So, but no. There you go. I have a nice computer here now. Let's see.
Yeah. Right, the keyboard is really nice to write on. And, uh, it resembles the same feel we have with a real keyboard. If you get the yellow keys, the yellow sherry keys, then it's uh, supposed to be very close to the original. So now I see the shift lock, the lock is actually not doing anything here. So I have to look into that. It was something about jumpers. Let's try and see if we can fix that. But yeah. So I hope you liked the video and uh, I really hope to get back to working on the CIA project very soon because I have a lot to do now and uh, I have a little bit trouble with uh, a number of IOs and stuff like that. Anyway, see you another time. Bye bye. Oh, I'd go as I see.